Crisis. I'm Summer Phoenix. And I'm Rain Phoenix. Welcome to Launch Left Podcast. A space for fame creatives to launch the next wave of music rebels and also an intentional space to highlight and empower all artists for whom radical creativity is not a choice, but a necessity. necessity. That's right. Thanks, sis, for finishing that statement off. It's good to be here with you today. Today we have a very special episode, an episode that's very close to home. Um, I'm a huge fan of my siblings and this will embarrass Summer a lot, but so that's why I'm doing it for you. So you can look at her face while I say how much I admire her and my sister Liberty and my brother Joaquin and my brother River. And, uh, and they've really taught me a lot about what it's like to think outside the box and be a creative. And we're, we've always been a little pod of siblings in some ways. And we've also always been incredibly individual as well. Um, and I've been thinking a lot today about, you know, how if we follow the norm, then we don't know the other possibilities and what a gift it is to be alive and to be able to make our own, own choices and and to do them from a place of, of uh, first asking, why am I here and, and for what reason am I here? Um, and if if my path is through the creative, how can I have that creative help other people through through the actions and, and the the uh, way that I express it. So with that in mind, you know, cutting your own cloth, as it were, is something that I, I love seeing other artists do, just taking it in a direction that they feel like expressing that has nothing to do with what's considered normal or, you know, if you want to get here, you got to do this. And if you want to get there, you got to do that. It's all about like what's coming out of me, what's pouring forth. And uh, I admire that a lot. And so I guess I wanted to talk about that a little bit because our guest today is. Whoa. Joaquin was, Phoenix. Yeah. Brother Joaquin. Like what of that, bro? Yeah. He's a pretty cool dude. We're glad that we get to talk to him with you. What happened, Summer? You're in shock over there? Yeah. I talked too long? No, it's everything that you said is totally awesome and true. It poured forth, just like you were saying. And so it was just a lot to uh, digest uh, in in the moment. Do I'm I hearing need to it. apologize? I'm hearing it for the first time. And so it's like, yeah, it's the same sort of thing. It's like, a, you know, processing it. It was awesome. You're awesome. No, it's great. you are. All right. Well, we'll see you on the other side. Welcome to Launch Left Podcast. Oh, hey, don't forget to rate and subscribe. Follow us on all our socials at Launch Left. Hi, sis. Berlin. Hi, sis. What's up, hey, bro? sis. What's up, bro? What's up, sis? How's oh, it my going? gosh. How are you? Great. You got us in at a late hour for Launch Left. I know, because I, I wanted the skyline to it's look like gorge. this. You set, you, what do they call it? Art directed it? No, I tried He's to setting get, a trend. <laughs> He's a trend. Setter. I tried to get out of it, actually, today. So you, you pushed know, it as late as possible, thinking we'd have to say No, that. I tried to push it to another day, and I was like, just get it over with. You're thinking, <laughs> about it. You're thinking about it all weekend. I'm just it'll ruin your weekend. Right? That's what your every day is like. Yeah, it's true. Great. Yeah. So we saw your movie, finally. I know. I do came to the premiere. We went there I was together. There. <laughs> we like all rode together. You idiot. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you getting pro again? That's what happened last time. You got yeah, pro, she does. and then I try to counteract pro. your pro with like, and then it was a disaster. My thing won. Is it I pro? I just like you know. I don't know. I was just gonna. I wanted to talk. I guess I wanted to talk about Joker. So I was like, how do you break into that conversation? Oh, so we saw know, your but movie. I'm your fucking brother. You just go. Hey, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and what are that, bro? Like, what are that, bro? <laughs> uh, yeah. So good. I mean, did you do something so unexpectedly. With your hair? Yeah, oh, what did God. you do? This is a changing the subject. Okay, fine. No, we're going to talk. Okay. A v- vegan moose. Nice. There was a vegan moose that gave me a hair Don't. tip. <laughs> <laughs> moose breath. <laughs> oh, my God. <sighs> yeah. It's great. It's so, good. Summer and I had but this all is out debates. Be edited, right? No, really we're going to leave it, actually, because people will I know. enjoy this. I was also there for the debate. About you were there. It yeah, and I talked about it when I went on... Late night? Jim A. Kimmel, yeah. Oh, we didn't see that. We didn't see it. <laughs> well, you did yourself a favor. Actually, I saw it, I think. because I think I saw a YouTube link of just that part. Right. And I was like, sure. And? Um... Did you, did you think it was funny? Do you think it was real? 
You knew that it wasn't because you were also there. Okay, fine. Wait, are you talking about the bit? <laughs> yeah, the bit. <laughs> yeah. No, the bit was, yeah. The bit was. Uh, I showed you that. I showed you that yeah. joke thing with yeah. like, before, uh huh. Yeah. But I saw yeah, the bit. I ago. saw the, the bit, which wasn't a bit. It was the truth. You were there during the debate that we had right. at your house after the premiere. Right. That it's only been. It wasn't I think, a debate. Well, be, Summer just yelled at you yeah. and told you what. Yeah, both of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's because like, they deserved it. It was right. they were wrong and I was right. And I, I know. can't believe but you were then you were so certain that you were right that you were like, right, Joaquin, is it <laughs> what it is? <laughs> I said, I don't know, whatever that you want it to be. I know. So much. I know. Wait, but why is she right? I I didn't say I she, she said I mean no, I was. You, <laughs> What? You might be right. It's you're right. it's right for you. But that's what was really oh, is that frustrating? so annoying. It's it hurts awful. inside. What, if you really think about it, isn't that what I, life is like? It doesn't everyone make their own opinion about freaking everything, even if someone goes, actually, this is like, yeah, no, it's not. So how I think it is. Like most people use their own point, perspective. But, I'm, but I am usually right. See, and then that's the thing is it's always right or wrong versus like, did, like, w did it make you think? Which honestly now we're two wow. weeks after or three, I still haven't stopped thinking about it and trying to kind of figure out. You're thinking about it because I'm here doing this podcast with <laughs> well, it you. Did come up with that. <laughs> but no, the other day and I was out in the wilds of New Mexico and, I, and it would look across my mind and I would go, oh, wait, so... So maybe that's not true about the character. Oh, maybe that's not. Maybe the whole thing is all in his mind and not, like literally still yeah. bothering me in a in a good way. And that I made me think about it, and it made me think about how we take for granted um, that we all have our own lens and our own perspective on life, and we're we're always judging each other based on our lens. And we're never judging someone based on the, what they're telling us is the truth for them. It's always like, yeah, I know what you really mean. I can feel your real intention. But in reality, like to them, they're thinking that about, uh, I mean, I don't know. I just yeah, found it really, not that that's what the movie was about, but I, and I digress. Well, I think that that's actually an interesting point because I think that we could find empathy for anybody if we were if we learned, if we were, if we were capable of, of really like stopping and listening and learning. And that is like getting to know somebody through the lens of who, who they are and who, not only how they present, but you know, um, you know, who they say that they are. And I think, I mean, I don't know, some, somebody else <laughs> Okay, everybody. I was, that's I, was, I, was, I should jump. If I was in a position, I want somebody to jump me. and I'm save me. But I was like, no, no, just let, just let her figure it out. Um, no, I was trying to think of what I could say in response that might be intelligent. Because I was nothing, right. Nothing but came I did to me. Say. Crickets nothing and saloon came. doors. Uh, yeah. Well, great. Congratulations. You guys did great. I love yeah. what you said about No, it was really, uh, yeah. Devastating. Don't you think too that the, your interpretation? I th my takeaway is like my interpretation has to do with the people I've met and known in my life that match up a little bit to the character at times, you know, uh, or, it, or had horrible things happen to them in childhood or stories I've heard where it's like you can just impart all kinds of things to, you know. And I think that's what I, I was really, you know, not to toot your horn, but that's. To me, that's like the best kind of craftsmanship in any art is you leave so much room for the people who digest it or watch it or experience it to be able to um, add their their what they re, what, what they feel and and there's not it's not like you're telling them how to feel about a person or a character or anything and that and you were just it was really powerful. Well, that um, that's nice. It's all just for me. It's just. Good luck if anything happens. That's um, that's interesting to you. I heard a quote. I don't know who said it. I think I know who said it, but I don't want to say it to them because maybe I'm wrong. But they said the um, the artist is the audience. Like they're the ones that are are really the ones that make it art. I mean, yeah. and we toss around that word art like so much. Yeah. Like I don't know. I feel embarrassed talking about a movie and calling it art, but whatever the fuck, something creative, right? Right, and um. And I, I think that there's, a, oftentimes in movies, there's not a lot of room for the audience to interpret it how they want and for it to be like their own experience. Um, 
it, it's you know most movies are um, are, are designed where the all of the characters' motivations are very clear, um, and they're telling you specifically what the movie means. Um, and I dislike the idea of like a message movie. Um, and so what what I what I liked about the movie is that there was that room for people to interpret how they wanted to. Um, and I think there's been a lot of uh, discourse on so many sides about the film and uh, and its value or whether it has any value or whether it's not interesting or boring, whatever the fuck it is. And I love all of it. Like, I, it's n never at any point have I been like, you don't know what you're talking about. You're wrong. I go, that's amazing. I, 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 somebody sent me something. Because I, I normally don't read things about a, a movie. Like, I don't feel like you should, ha you should have to answer for something like creative. I think it's... Okay, I have too, too many thoughts. I'm losing myself. You're going to edit this, hopefully, and figure it out. Nope, leaving it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I um, read this thing where there are two people kind of arguing, and, and one really liked the movie, thought it was viable, and the other one thought it was garbage. And as they it was were... Me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and as they were kind of arguing back and forth, I felt like each of their arguments got stronger and more specific oh, wow. as they went back and forth. And so I was sitting there reading this piece and I was like, oh, that's fucking incredible because when I read the guy's opinion who didn't like the movie, didn't think I was good, I was like, those are all strong points. <laughs> like, I, like I totally got it. And then the, the other guy responded. He said, well, this is why I disagree. And I was like, that's a really good point too. And then that guy's, the next guy's argument changed. And so it was just interesting to see that they were kind of elevating each other's perspectives and position on the movie by having this conversation. And I thought that was the coolest. So there was no part of me that was like, a guy who doesn't like it, he just doesn't get it. Um, there was one, one part that I think that he missed <laughs> that, that just because he, he felt he, in the movie, uh, Joker commits these crimes on a, on a subway and, and, uh, there's not really any witnesses, but soon after the the media, uh, the newspapers say, you know, kill the rich, kill her clown on the loose. And they said, how would, it's a real plot hole and it's lazy writing. How would, how would you know that, uh, how would the media know that he was starting this movement to kill the rich? And it's like, no, that's precisely the point is the, the media sensationalized this exactly. thing and created this narrative, right. but they didn't know what it was. And he wasn't trying to kill the rich exactly. um, and creating this movement, the, right? Yeah. And they go, uh, motherfucker, you're in the media. Like, uh, well, how did you miss? Ah, maybe that's why. Um, right. So. That was, that's like the only thing that I'd say, well, that I think that you missed the point of what that is about, right? And why the newspaper says that. It's a commentary about the media. Um, and, and so you missed that. So that would be the only kind of criticism that I think that I, I'd say like I, you missed that, that point. But which is a which is a really good point to make about the I think about the movie full stop because it is a commentary to me the movie was and you maybe weren't trying to do that but it was a social commentary on on society and our lack of compassion and on and sometimes how the news media for click throughs and you know the most sensational thing and who's going to watch or listen if I put this headline on it that people do that that they make you know that and, and at the same time like if you think about how I like to think about things and if we were to think more as a, about our shared humanity you know and not what makes us like wrong or right which in that case I like that you were like yeah I Search saw our both similarities points. and yeah. not our differences but there is a point too where it's like you, if someone has a blind spot it's good to illuminate that and I felt that the film did illuminate that blind spot we have with media sensationalizing things that can exacerbate and actually snowball things that weren't even meant to to do you know anything that the media says it's doing and the next thing you know it's seen as a poster child for something it never advocated for to begin with and that happens with art and artists and films and music all kinds of things all the time and so i do think just even commenting on that was courageous whether you meant to or not i i saw that through fear and felt like oh that's cool yeah i think i think p partially that's um there is that commentary uh, that's in the script but there's also, 
you know, at least with the directors that I've worked with, um, the the movie is is like it's like a its own entity. It's a, it's alive and it's changing in ways that are beyond your control. Sometimes, like it was a really solid script with a lot of strong ideas and opinions, but a lot of things changed and a lot about the character changed. Um, you know, I, I think there were some kind of uh, I think at times people were, uh, I've heard that, the, you know, they felt like, um, you know, that the the character seems, you know, by the end when he's Joker, that, you know, we're kind of glorifying him in some ways. And he seems like, you know, kind of cool in a way, uh, for lack of a better word. But it wasn't, you know, the way that it was written when he goes on the Murray Franklin show was like a bumbling fool. And something else took over when we went to shoot that. And I don't really know how to explain it. I don't think Todd does. And it wasn't our intention, but you just follow something, right? I mean, you sit down to write a song, you both play music and write, you have your idea of what it's going to be, but at some point you're just in the flow and it becomes something else. Um, so some of those criticisms, you know, maybe, maybe it's, maybe it's fair, but it's not really, Sometimes not a well thought out designed um, idea. Sometimes you are just in the moment and you're reacting to something that, at least for me, I don't fully understand what it is. I don't really want to. I mean, that's what I love about it. It's not um, premeditated always or created. It's yeah, or you some... have you have your ten ideas going into something, and then it just starts telling you wh which one to do, you know? Well, and in the case of the character being um, progressively more mentally unstable, being taken off meds because they can't afford to, you know, he can't be, he can't get psychoanalyzed, he can't get his meds. Like, really, too. Well, we anything. don't really ever know if he was on meds because he was actually, I mean, there's like different... Right, but I guess that's the thing is it could be any number of perspectives, but if that is... Let's say that's the only true thing, right? And then it stands to reason in his mind in a in a in a maniacal way, like all that is this wonderful coming out part. You know what I mean? So it's not meant to be that that was what necessarily like that's the thing that's so difficult about or not difficult to me, thought provoking about mm -hmm. the film was that it was like a labyrinth that it was a kind of you know, it seemed like the character was choosing their own adventure based on where the heads, you know, but, and, and the audience gets to do it too. And so if we take anything too literally and too like dogmatically one where this is what they were trying to say, and the, then, then it is missing the point of, of, of just the expression of this, not to mention that if you even, let's say all that, let's not talk about, Joker is, is a, a longstanding supervillain slash character in, comics and in the world in other films already and so there's certain elements of that that are just like part of that story right that like is is part of it and the retelling or the origin part is what's really interesting because you had so much more freedom and liberty but like why why didn't to me it's like anything could have matched up for where we're headed with where he, that character becomes as we already know him mm -hmm. right in other films yeah i mean i I, I think that, um, you know, human psychology is really complex and what motivates our actions is really complex. And we want, we want easy answers. We want solutions to those things, right? Because it's frustrating being human and it's frustrating seeing things happening in the world that, you know, are terrifying because it's beyond your comprehension. And so it's, you know, it makes sense in some ways to to want to, you know, use the medium of film to try and control life in some ways. But I, I you know, I think there's something valuable and interesting about not being able to to control it. Um, I just completely lost my point. Uh, my I phone, feel my, like phone, my for, phone is ringing, and I for a, so, well, that's a great thought. Yeah, hey, you know, make it a million. I'm there. Ah, right, cool. Oh. Um, for Never such an under mind. underdog character, though, I, I found it fascinating that he, he never 
or the, the way that he's portrayed or you portray him is never one that seems to be aware of that fight or flight. He's rarely, even though he is, um, you know, bashed down again and again and again, he still seems to, you know, his world is small and looking down and he's rarely gazing to the horizon to see if anything is coming at him. Like there's no, there's not that innate fear in him that it is that some some shit's gonna go down and he's in trouble or that he's in and that was one of the most interesting aspects to me that is interesting i don't um because i'd always admit you know i don't know but the one thing i because i i had done um <clears throat> research about ptsd from this other film and the one thing that i did recognize is there's a third component <clears throat> to PTSD that we don't often talk about. We talk about fight or flight. We don't talk about freeze. Um, and so when he's getting beat up by these kids, yeah. I'm like, oh, that's freeze mode. Mm -hmm. Like that's literally somebody that had suffered kind of childhood trauma and physical abuse and literally just goes into this position. And what, what PTSD is, is it's an overstimulated amygdala. And I don't really know what the fuck that is. The region is of the it brain. In the back or the front? Uh, I'm not know? sure. Let's 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 open you up and take a look. Let's figure, <laughs> let's figure it out. <laughs> I don't know I don't where think it you'll is. You'll find much right in, in the there. The yeah, but it, but it's basically our our lizard mm -hmm. brain, right? It's the part of the it's the old part of the brain. Um, well, on mine, it's certainly old. It's definitely getting older every day. <laughs> uh, but but basically, an overstimulated amygdala. You you perceive and are looking for a threat everywhere. Um, you're just in, constantly in this reactive state. And so they've proven scientifically that when you go into fight or flight, your IQ drops significantly because you don't need higher brain functions. All you need to do is figure out how they get the fuck away from this saber tooth tiger, right? And so everybody fucking gets dumb, right? And you're not, you're, you're, you, you lose your ability to reason. Mm. And this is somebody that is locked in that state constantly. So he he's wrong about so much that's happening. He, there aren't these real threats. So much of it is in his head. <clears throat> Something seems kind of, you know, unbelievable about, you know, the, a bunch of teenagers stealing his sign and, and beating him up, right? So that, to me, that's a great example of did this happen or is this just how he perceives the, the world, right? Um, and, and so so I think that it's somebody that's kind of locked in that, that way of thinking um, and that never learned, you know, never learned the, the, the ability to kind of reason properly and to look at the world for what it is, right? They're constantly in this kind of irrational state of fear. And I think a lot of people live like that, you know? And a lot of people have suffered greatly and, and suffer childhood trauma that they never never learned how to recover from. And so I think that is for me the the part of the movie that's most important that I believe. Case in point. <laughs> Case in point. Okay, um but just that, you know, this this is somebody that really suffered this trauma and you know it's a it's a you know, a lot of kids that are adopted, they have, um, a, you know, a, how do you say this without sounding like an idiot or a dick? Um, but just statistically, there are higher rates of, of crime, not because they're inherently bad people, right? Mm -hmm. But because they don't have the the parenting and, and, and um, the, the right support system. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and so... You know he's clearly a product uh, uh, of that world. Now there are plenty of people that have those those tough beginnings, um, and you know I don't know that they find their way or some somehow they um, they overcome it. He's also a narcissist, um, so you know he has these ex this expectation that the world is supposed to treat him a particular way. Um, you know, like royalty, right? <laughs> and that's his narrative in his in his head. So it's very, it's, to me, it's complex. It's not an easy answer. It's not just, right, society fucked this guy over and they're responsible for his actions. I don't think that's the case. I don't think that's fair. Um, 
it, it's just, again, it's more complex than that. I'm certainly not smart enough to understand uh, what it is, uh, the, 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 the cause. And I, I think that's... It goes back to what we were talking about this before a little bit. I've I interrupted you. No, you don't interrupt. Again, you I'm think you're saving, saving me. I'm fucking saving you. I know. You, one time I, know I asked you to save me. me, and you just let me. You let, let I know, me I know, and twice. <laughs> nobody commented about the fact that I w literally started off saying something and went, uh, I've lost my thought. And you guys went, right. And just well, went, because no. everything you said, there was plenty of great closure, I thought, in each of your points. But yeah, you, you may have lost yeah, some of it. But I only have enough attention span for like, what's happening now so whatever ha i miss and then so sometimes yeah. i'm paying attention other times i'm thinking oh god my dry cleaning is left i left it two months now and i gotta do it they're gonna dump it i don't know yeah the dry cleaning yeah uh, you know i never well, dry clean i don't dry clean i don't you don't no. you just can't you tell by my, my rags picking up all of these dog, dog hairs, hairs? <laughs> definitely because i can see them and i've noticed them <laughs> um, um, this also is this is my clean hoodie too so i have five of them and four of them i I know, I was dusting Summer's white yeah, off yeah. there. Yeah. That's okay. Um, I was with a white cat before this. I think what this. you were saying Thank you. was talking about a little bit related to what we were talking about Mike's earlier, there. which was, I know I was cleaning the shkeev off of me because you were, um, which was that suffering begins with, um, or th that <laughs> life is suffering, all right, and that 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 comes from this idea that it is not what we want it to be, right? Or what what are we expect a certain outcome or feel we're entitled to mm -hmm. a certain reality that we end up creating the exact opposite of, or maybe not the exact opposite, but in different undulating time, you know, in different waves, we create. Come on, guys. Let's go. Oh. I mean, get in here with this. I, this is I, uh, some heady stuff. Well, yeah, we I, just, mean, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, we here's were the thing. About I know. It. Okay. Because I get it's so fucked up because I um, I'm 45 years old and I'm still scared of like a 13 year old making fun of me and be like, "You're so stupid." <laughs> <laughs> like, it's unbelievable. And so much of like my insecurity. When when talking or trying to explain things is in the back of my head, I, somebody's going, "You're so stupid. What do you think? Shut up." <laughs> um, and uh, and maybe they're right. You know, I mean, maybe, maybe I should, but it it prevents me. So, but we really, know I'm, nothing. We're just here to learn and talk yeah. and chat yeah. and like. There's so no expectation right. no, really. There's here a, there are like, a bunch of thirteen year olds out there but, that are like, "You got to learn to really up." They, but, sure. If they, would ever to the show. No, no, <laughs> yeah. not, I, mean, I mean, our own nephews will yeah, not be listening to this. I mean, are you yeah, kidding? I mean, it's, yeah, it's, there's like, I think there's like... They're lost. A, 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 well, what? they're no. not. I think there's See, like maybe I said that 100 I people like that like, might check it out. No, they're lost. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I just tuned in for that one part to say, you fucking suck! <laughs> <laughs> But can I just say that they're, those 13-year-old boys that are judging you in your mind, in their mind, there's somebody, a thir another fellow peer judging them. And it's literally like the, what is it? The bird watcher, watch the bird watcher, watch the, that, 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 that we're all doing that. Anyway. And, and what is that actually doing for anyone? You know what right. I mean? And, and, and not that like everyone should be like, well, my opinion, let me tell the world. Like, um, but it's also like, why well, stop? Uh, if, if, if you want to share with your friends and family about something meaningful and the whole world's going to listen, you know, you have to take into account that there are those 13 year olds on yeah, your but, shoulder. And, but, maybe, but, but maybe they're right. And, and why fear criticism? Right. The, the thing is, is that right. there's value in criticism. There's value in learning about something. And sometimes you have to humiliate yourself. Sometimes you have to be embarrassed to take a look at things. And there's nothing wrong with that. We're, we're so concerned and afraid all the time of like looking good and being smart and saying the right thing and and sometimes it's it's okay to to not do that to express your opinion and they say in buddhist and also philosophy acknowledge your that, ignorance that, that yeah may be around. exactly you, absolutely and that is something i've heard in buddhist philosophy that they say that embarrassment like being like horribly embarrassed is one of the most purifying things that you can happen to someone because it just it's like takes tons of 
your negative out is just to have that naked moment in front of a lot of people yeah. or whatever, that it's actually really helpful for you. You know, if you, if you have the courage to see life that way, it's a good thing. I, I think that that is probably the key component to, to every job that, that I do. And it's why I have such hesitation and fear about working is because I know that I'm going to have to experience public humiliation and I don't want to because who does, but I know that like for me, nothing's going to come of it. Nothing's going to come of the work unless I have that experience because it's just, you have to get to, at least I do have to get to a place where I, 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 that's, that's losing myself. You know what yeah. I mean? That's, that's not being in character, right? It's like not having control over how people perceive me or whether they think that I'm like good or talented or whatever. I mean, I, I've on every movie, there's a point where I'm sure that the, the crew's going, how did this fucking guy get this one? Like, how is he still have a job? Because they're, you know, I mean, on, on Joker, uh, I told, you know, now at this point, I, I know it well, well, well enough. I told Todd, and I said, the last week I'll get it. Um, and it wasn't quite that, but um, we shot <clears throat> the first... Um, I don't really want to say how many weeks because it's really embarrassing, but several weeks in which there's maybe three minutes of that in the movie. or something. I don't know how, how long, but a couple scenes because I, <clears throat> I went in with an idea, the concept of the character. I thought I was really smart. Um, I thought I was like really interesting. And, uh, I mean, I didn't. I also was like, I don't know. This maybe this is wrong. I talked to a ruin. I said, "Is this fucking stupid? I don't know what to do." But I found this reference of this guy, this this kid uh, that was undergoing psychiatric evaluation, and um, and I, you know, I, I thought it was really interesting. His behavior is really interesting. I was like, this might be a really good model. Um, and we ended up using some of the look and like some of the wardrobe is kind of based on this guy. But I was doing this thing for the first few weeks. Um, that if you saw it, you would go like, wait, that's really what you started with? And you shot for that long doing that? And I think, you know, Todd and I just wanted to push ourselves and go like, it's okay, like, let's not try and hold anything back. Like, let's let's go for it. And fine, let's go for this. And uh, And there was a point where I, you know, we shot for a while and I, I, I think I, we stepped back and we looked at it and we realized that it wasn't the right, it wasn't the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? I was like, can we Riveted. see this scene? Are you going to, are we going to cut now to this? Week? The scene, this, this scenes. No, I was going to oh say my, the, the first two weeks of a totally different interpretation, basically. Yeah. But wow. what, how are you relating that to the embarrassment thing? Is Are you because, saying that you... So because what happened... No, it's a long oh, way of doing it. You guys can it. edit it. But I, I'm sorry that it's boring. I know I'm boring. But, no. But um, no, I was, because there was a point where I realized this is wrong and I had to go into work and tell wow. the makeup and hair and the wardrobe um, and everybody and talk, you know, and go to Todd and, and you know, we talked about it. Luckily you know, he's so open and lovely and treated me like a fucking partner. And, you know, so I felt fine with him, but it was really embarrassing to go to make up hair and say, you know, I fucked up and I want to change the hair and I want to change the way that I'm wearing the clothes and some of the clothes. And can we do this? And to think like all, all these people that were working on this and had like worked really hard in those couple of weeks, you know, I had to admit, like I was, totally fucking off and i was so humiliated uh, i mean no it's this fucking small thing big deal it's a movie right but when you're doing it it's that the most important job. thing Absolutely, right yeah. and all these all these people are around and you know they're putting up with your shit for how many weeks i don't want to say uh and then you know i had to say and that really was that that was a moment where just like i just was crushed um and i don't mean to be over dramatic but overly dramatic but 
that's what it felt like. And it, it was really, there was like, it was a rough two days that you, you know, we made this decision on a Sunday and, and went in Monday morning. And the first two days were like, I mean, me and Todd were just looking at each other like, what are we doing? It felt very, you know, we felt very unsure of ourselves and everything and it was I can't believe how much this like idea of embarrassment and humiliation actually sounds so much like vulnerability right sure. just like yeah. you know which uh -huh. also then like looking at it with exactly something like that is which we've talked about before sort of is you know is equal to an incredible bravery and in, cuz you're walking in knowing that you are going to humiliate yourself yeah. and it's laying yourself bare in a sense. Yeah. And that makes sense for like this idea of purification, like the utmost of purifications in embarrassment or humiliation is, you know. Purification for a fee. Um, <laughs> 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 With a paycheck I mean, at the it's end. It's not right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so it's some people yeah. are like, uh, yeah, I mean, Look at some of the reality shows. They're like, um, yeah, I, just, you can, I, I do you love, I love really how many me. times you have a critic. Like, it's so obvious you have such a strong inner critic by how first it's a 13 year old boy, and, and now it's Roger. This is my exactly. <laughs> internal critic, Ro <laughs> Hare. Um, sometimes he's, I have several. There's a 13 year old, exactly. an older man. Yeah. Yeah. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. Like, you do. You have different, I can hear you having different interpretations from different inner critics of, uh, but, but the point. They're being, all right. <laughs> well, and here's the question I have in regard to hitting that place where, you know, <clears throat> vulnerability, uh, embarrassment, humiliation. Is that when you kind of broke through to the other side and you, you found, you found it is what you're saying that, that. Yeah. Or I let go right. of one part. Like I never felt like I found it and that I was right. I think that's what it's the that breakthrough you, was. What you right. said originally right. was that you lost yourself. Exactly. So right. it's not that you found the character, but right. you were, you laid bare enough to let go of Joaquin so that yeah, you I were mean, whatever I, you were. Obviously, uh, yeah, come I don't on, know, let's uh, not. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I know what you're saying, <laughs> but, but it's enough to let go of the critical part of yourself or the part that like wants to be awesome or like wants to do all those stupid fucking ego things that we have no matter what that feels that kind of pressure and you know it's the thing that I always want and I think sometimes you're lucky enough to get to but it's letting go of that part of you that like has we we're talking about before that has expectation and then because like I don't, I don't know what this is. I don't know what the best route is. I don't know what the best, best thing is to say. Um, but I know that when I'm trying to control it, it's, it's, that's definitely not the right thing. Right? Cause I just, I don't, I, I just can't, I can't do that. It's the way that it works. Can anybody? I'm dying to know. Do you guys, I, that's, I was you know just what I mean? thinking the same thing. I was like, is there anyone who like sits there and like maps stuff yeah. out and, can and then control like control it and has the outcome that they that they're yeah. control? You know what I mean? Like that makes Do it. You happen. think that that's really and that we and that I think it's just like a different it? approach of getting to the same thing. I think ultimately something. What the fuck do I? Rohar, shut up. <laughs> 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 I, like it's just it's a different approach to getting something right somebody that uses um math is an artist um you know an architect somebody that is uh rigorous and diligent break things down it st still taps into that yeah whatever the fuck that creative thing is right yeah. Um, and you know, some people, you know, when they talk about people that talk about writing a song and they go, honestly, I sat down the piano and it just came, came out. Yeah. Uh, it was the easiest song I've ever written in my life. And it's yeah. like the best song ever. Yeah. Um, and sometimes they're laborious and working and going like, gosh, what if I altered that note? It's, it's all valid, right? I don't think there's a, there's not a right way to do it. However you get past yourself. And if that's being like, um, rigorous and and um, studied. yeah, and studied and intellectual ab about about the approach. That's valid, um, and I, I think that you I think you em employ all those different things w when you work, or at least I do. Right, there are times where 
there are times where that kind of like the studying that I did, the research that I did, I employed and it was important. Mm -hmm. And there are other times where the research that I did did not serve me and I was wrong and I got too focused on this idea because I thought, oh, it's really smart to use that as a, as a, as a guide. Like that's, that's great. And it wasn't. Right. And, and then I, I was okay with that. And oftentimes, like that's what I love so much about making movies is I remember one day we went uh, into the scene and it was one of the few times um, where I kind of like had figured out this thing in my head like completely in advance like sometimes if I just I'm in the trailer and like idea comes I won't I won't finish the thought and I'll finish it once we're on set and this I kind of like finished the thought and I went and I did it and like halfway through <laughs> I'm going oh my god this is so bad this is so bad and it was but out of that, afterwards, and after Todd coming in and going, um, I didn't love that. Uh, and I was like, I know, I know. Uh, it's so embarrassing. Out of that came an idea that I think really worked and, and was in the movie. Um, Whoa, that, I'm going to pause, put a pause there, because that is something I've been thinking so much about lately, is how... Every single uh, today, I connected the dots where where it's reversible as well. So like every yeah. single wonderful moment in my life ha passed through all kinds of horrible ones. Every single deep friendship and connection I've had passed through ones where I was betrayed and mutilated by <laughs> by relationship. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And the reverse is true. Every shitty situation I've ever had came out of the most exultant mm -hmm. times of my life every mm -hmm. great relate you know terrible relationship came from like falling in love with some you know what i mean yeah. so mm -hmm. how how you know ignorant it is of me to walk through life and get attached to like this is good that was bad when i couldn't have arrived here at good without that mm -hmm. and and starting to see it as this like miasma if that's the right word or like a quilt of all of it Okay. I don't know where it Jorge came from. from. Sometimes. <laughs> Jorge, is that another one? Oh, that was no, Rohe. Oh, okay. Well, Jorge is here too. That must be my. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's, no, exact, that that's a, really interesting. Yeah, that is a, that is a great point. And even in the craft of, of making a scene that you, that can happen, you'd be like, oh, I'm going to go there and nail this thing. Well, it's the idea might... of something being good or bad right, also. Right. right? And, and I think that's the biggest thing, mm -hmm. especially yeah. as an actor, is you don't really have to make that decision. Right. Um, it's, it's what's either truthful or not. Right. So this idea that I had, it was a good idea. But it wasn't truthful. And so it seemed that it was wrong. You don't know that it was bad. It just it just wasn't right. Mm -hmm. um, wow. And so I think when we come fixated on this idea of like good or bad, which is connected to our ego, right? Either we're good and people think we're awesome and if it's good or it's bad, they think we're bad, I'm no good, I'm not talented or whatever. It's that stupid kind of ego shit. But it, but I think to differentiate between right and truthful, because you, mm -hmm. because I don't think, I think good and I think right and wrong are pretty similar to good and bad. And, mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. and it was a better sort of right. thought to say like, well, authenticism or, the, or, authenticity. you know, authenticity or truth. Well, I prefer authenticism. I thought but... that was a great word. <laughs> I'm killing like, I'm, I'm your Rohair. I can't believe. She's like, Jorge, just, hey, you're my Rohair. So are either of you actually in the podcast room with me or are you just... Because I've been... I've Do you been remember? Rohair, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Keep will not leave me alone. So I'm just putting it out in the world. Just so fucked up. I'm putting it on you. Right? Which is what we do, right? Yeah, yeah. it is. What yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's so cold. It's, it's so cold. Liberty taught cold. me that. Oh, it's so cold. Liberty, where the fuck is Liberty? I know. I wish she was here right now. I mean, so call her good. up. What is oh, she let's doing? call her. Seriously. But, you know, I mean, you know, something, and, you know, uh, and uh, in some ways, before you said something about bravery, and, and, uh, Somebody told me that um, they're like, you know the difference between bravery and courage? And I was like, yeah. They're like, really? I was like, well, I mean, because it's like, oh, it's going to be brave or courageous. Do you what know? is the difference? I'm trying to come up with something. I'm a, I mean, I don't feel like you've well, given me much time. Well, I'm not going to explain this right because 
shut the fuck <laughs> up. Bro hair. hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been, uh, you know, fine. Just so bravery is is um is not having any fear. Just kind of like you know, rushing into something without fear of the consequences. Now Courage is when yeah. It's when you doubt yourself and and Give you fear, anyway. yeah, you fear the the um, the results, wow. and uh, and you do it anyway. And I was like, oh wow, yeah, it's amazing, right? Because I use them interchangeably, right? And and they're not right. There's this very distinct difference, um, and uh, and I, I thought that was I thought that was really interesting, and I think it goes into kind of like the vulnerability or the idea of like doing the right and wrong or the truth for the authenticism. (laughs) (laughs) I thought I'd just break the ice and talk. No, no, it's amazing. But, you know, um, and I think that something, you know, that in some ways, what also thing that we're talking about, we're talking about creative and that is what you're doing with the record. Um, and, uh, you talking to me? yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. You I are. Think we're talking but about this is a great t- subject. I'm happy you're talking about this, Joaquin. Yeah, you're talking about the new record, and you know, to me, I think that it's it's courageous. And you know, I was talking to mom today, and uh, sure, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and saying that like even when you started out and had this feeling, and we're talking about the record and what you want to do with it, you were talking to me in summer. Mm-hmm. You know, we were. Going like, oh no, like, you know, like fuck her, right? Yeah. And and really, in some ways, we're we're critical because I think that it was scary to us too, right? And and at least I'll speak for myself. It was, yeah, you want definitely yeah. no. I you can speak. Yeah, don't speak for me. But I was just <laughs> going to speak for you okay. because <laughs> I was there. And whatever you may have felt, something that you said was, hey this is your story. You can tell your story, Rain. I'm not going to, thanks for asking me. Thanks for bringing me into this and explaining it to me. But this is your story. You have, you get to tell it. Right. And, you know, it was difficult for me to say that because I wanted to say, no, shut the fuck up. Go put yourself in a box and jump in the ocean. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Because because it scared me. But what I I realized, (laughs) but what I realized was not only that there wasn't in in some ways that it was not only her story but it was right. it was a story that everybody shares in right. and that she was exploring and oftentimes when people uh t- you know talk about things particularly kind of like death in a public way it feels self-pitying and it feels like this um kind of need or desire to be understood and felt do you see my pain and i think that I had this kind of reaction of like, ooh, what, what, are you, what are you doing? Why do you want that? Why do you, do you want that attention? And I realized that she didn't want the attention for herself, that it was something that she was kind of sharing and exploring, Seven. right? Mm-hmm. And, and I realized like that was so courageous um, because I'm sure that it was scary to do that, scared to talk to us and ask us if it was okay to call the record not. river. There's and, no way I couldn't because even though you know, and I appreciated you saying that that day. This is your story. You, can, but th- I strongly believe in in the philosophy of interdependence, which is like the connectivity of all things. And like, there's no way that this is my story alone. It does connect to you, and it connects to Summer, and it connects to Mom and Liberty. And honestly, it connects to everyone. When you really, and that's what I wanted to follow that through fair to like, what about this is universal? Because I see so many. Uh, I I feel. Like my personal story is universal and I think other people's are to me. Like I'm like, I feel something from that. And ultimately I had this like feel, this sense of, oh, well, we, no one talks about this stuff and mm-hmm. I want to explore it. And, and how can I do that? For me, it was just intentionally calling it river was, the, was, I, was all I knew that I was doing. There was yeah. no like, I wasn't planning on like, so I'm going to yeah. set up all these things and start time. It was just like, if I just do that, yeah. let it be what it is from that um, and see what happens. And, you know, and you, your openness and, and acceptance when I knew, believe me, it was really hard to share with you because I'm even as private or as you are or as upsetting as it is for you. 
I like the idea of sharing openly about what totally irks me too, right? Like, and I think about it in general, from what I gather, even from people who are dying or have illness um, or are sick or that I've noted through, through my life of either being close to them or careful, is that nobody wants to be um, seen as, as a victim, really, you know, mm -hmm. or predominantly people, even when they're really close to death, want to be strong and, and, and be able to manage themselves. Like that fear of being ne needing other, you know, like, I don't think I'm articulating well, but basically what I realized is like, as a rule, especially around things like death and dying or sickness or people, you know, you want to be treated nor like everyone else. But my point was I wanted to explore the taboo subject of something that like, for some reason, we're all a little bit, um, for a good reason, because it fucking hurts. Like, it, it's something that, you, you know what I mean? And I guess... The last thing I want to say around specifically that was that culturally speaking, because it's not we don't talk about death, you know, um, very commonly or it's not supported in a culture way like some cultures do. Uh, then people are sent right back to work after grieving with, you know, sent right back into like mm -hmm. a situation where they're not even seeing the world as mm -hmm. like they saw it yesterday. Everything's mm -hmm. changed, right. yet they're being forced into the same things. Mm -hmm. And that and that I just wanted to like put my flag up and say like, hey, man, isn't this hard? Or life's hard, right, out there. And I see I see it. I don't know what it means, but we can say it. Mm -hmm. Pistols at dawn? Yeah, can we say but pistols at dawn? But it's also turning, but I think that it, it also gives <clears throat> some, some purpose or, or meaning to that experience. And we were talking earlier, um, you know, and you were saying that it's, it's, um, you know, death can be traumatic, but that's not the end of the story. And it's not just saying, oh, I experienced this trauma, feel, feel sorry for me. It's, it's, we've, we're all experiencing this or have in some way, and we all will at some point, but how can my experience potentially benefit somebody else, yeah. right? And what the fuck is the point of like experiencing something <clears throat> and going through it if you can't kind of, share what it is maybe not even the way of, of i now have the answer because i don't think any yeah. of us do or any cl sure, any no. closer to understanding yeah. right but at least i have this experience and there's something about that right of knowing that you're standing next to somebody else that has had that there's experience sh strength right? and hope and right. sharing experience right? right and so that <clears throat> that's what you know so suddenly i uh i really saw the 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 value in it and took me out of a way of thinking about uh things a way that i had for for so long which was kind of really just thinking about myself and how you know how it uh how those things can how it affected me um instead of seeing the the potential of of how that experience might be beneficial to someone else and maybe not and that's okay right but no matter what, again, kind of going back to what we were saying earlier, you 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 just express it. You, you know, you, yeah, you express what you feel, and it might resonate with some people, and for the people that it won't, and you know that's okay, right? And I don't think anybody's oh, saying totally, I have yeah. the I have the answer, right? Used to that, left of center, <laughs> <laughs> not very popular. You know what I mean? <laughs> left of center basically means not popular. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, in in many ways. I, I realized how much through the process of making the record and through Launch Left and Summer and I have had yeah. conversations about that. All of this is is really river. It, river is so strong and all of this, but it's it's not just river. It's how we all grew up. It's mom and dad and what the kind of principles they imparted on us and what they they said to strive for, which wasn't to be popular, but to do the truth, to be the truth within right. you and to and to defend defenseless beings. Right. right. That being a big part of it. Well, you know, I mean, the one thing, you know, it's amazing because I would say the the values that we imparted to them. I mean, it's right, incredible what true. you think <laughs> about the fact that yeah. the kids are the ones that insisted that we go vegetarian and then ultimately yeah. Riv suggested vegan. We said, why are we just being vegetarian? Why would we use animals in this way? And we became vegan. That was because of us. It's incredible that our parents, I mean, we were, you weren't even born yet. No, I wasn't. Right? And I mean, we were, we were such little kids and yet we had this 
undeniable epiphanous moment when we saw those fish being killed. They listened to you. And that's what's fucking incredible, right? Yeah. yeah. And so it's really so so beautiful because it, so it's not like there were two people that had this value system that that imparted to us right. or imposed it on us right. or even suggested it. That it was a shared reciprocal yeah. experience, right? And somehow they were so kind of sensitive and thoughtful and evolved that they would listen to children because they saw what was a totally honest, visceral reaction to something that we were witnessing. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't deny that. I mean, I still remember mom's face crying. You know mom's crying face, <laughs> right? <laughs> Why are we laughing? This good. No, because it's... No, I know. I'm but she, and she, I, you know, when she can't, when yeah. she's crying, she does... <laughs> she, can't, she, can't, she can't speak. It's just a face thing. Yeah. yeah. And she was so horrified because we said, how come you didn't tell us that's where animals came from? Like, that's where, sorry, that's where you, meat, meat came from. Because right. right? you get served a thing. You get chicken. You know what the fuck that is? Hot Fish, dog. A hot dog, right? A hamburger. Yeah. And to suddenly see that moment where we went, wait, fish, what we've been eating on the beach used to be that, the thing that was alive. Was, how come you didn't tell us that? It was such a fucking, we felt so betrayed, betrayed yeah. right? Yeah. How could you not have fucking told us that? And I remember mom just being so shocked and, and embarrassed, ashamed that she didn't tell us. Why would she? It never occurred to her. She was never told. She wasn't told that this might be something that you should be opposed to. Yeah. But they were immediately receptive because, again, it was, it was. It wasn't right or wrong. It was truth. Yeah, maybe. And there was. Well, it was. Yeah, it I was. Think your it, hair, it, it, hair was silent for a second there. You're lucky. <laughs> your personal row hair was like, thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got a thumbs up. Yeah, no, but, <laughs> but you're right. It was. It, it was. It seemed undeniably truthful. You know, uh, in that moment. I do think that there's something to be said for our little pod of people in that one thing that I think mom and dad were pretty strong about was the intentionality, whatever that was. Once, once was coming together and, and, and believing in something and shooting for something once. Okay. Let's get all our ducks and we're, what are the ducks? You know, they were open to like, what are the ducks? Oh, we're not doing this. We're not. Okay, cool. But then once we were there, it was like, we all were kind of on the same trajectory together. And there's something to be said for that kind of group connection or aspiration to do something together, right? And I've seen that with like bands I've had or, you know, just projects where it's like when you really make it, like this is intentional and I want it to, you yeah, know, I, do you agree? Let's do this together. That it makes a massive difference. And so also the intent, but the, what the intention was for them, I think, and what they was, was that they, they wanted something big. They wanted change. Mm. They were, they wanted a change in consciousness. You know, they wanted to offer a different idea, a different and, and infuse right. a sort sort of power that that was possible mm -hmm. yeah, in a time I, when. I talk about courage. I mean, right. mom from a middle-class Jewish family in the Bronx who mm -hmm. like leaves her young marriage and goes to LA and then did she pick up dad? No, he, he picked, picked the her, uh, her hitchhiking. Her and her girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. First, yeah. And gave mom his number and she was like, I'm never calling this fucking exactly. dude. <laughs> but what happens when you move to a new city, you're lonely. You don't, have, you any don't have any friends. <laughs> it's out of desperation. She called dad and, and now I pointed myself and now I'm and here. Now you're uh, some of you guys were not... Yeah, but I mean, yeah, that's such an incredible story. I, yeah, I mean, it so sounds like it so sounds like that. It was, it so was California. Years. It was California. She went from the Bronx. She came to the Holy Land, California. Yeah, but I mean, it was pretty, uh, pretty L crazy. Laurel Canyon. Liver, and she was willing to kind of um, step out of her comfort zone, mm -hmm. yes, right? Absolutely. And and to take on something, and you know. I think it's hard to remember, look, I don't even really, I don't even know, but I think it's hard to remember for us how tumultuous that period was. Like, do you know the, like just, if, just the well-known assassinations of like the Kennedys and Martin Luther King and Malcolm X all within like 
I don't know, a five year period or something. Uh, oh, I don't think we can even process what yeah. that is, right? It just seems impossible, right? Yeah. We look at our times now and go, they're, they're so difficult and challenging, and, and they are, mm -hmm. but that must have been fucking terrifying. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Your if you heroes, grew up yeah. with the, the idea, if you were a product of the kind of <clears throat> the 50s and being a child in the, in the kind of 50s and this idea of everything's perfect and Tupperware parties and shit, and then they're like, they killed the fucking president. Mm. Um, you know what I mean? It, it must have been um, anxiety inducing to say the least, yeah. right? And so I think there was a real desperation on their part. Of like, we don't want to be a part of, of this. Like, mm -hmm. whatever our parents, their parents were doing and the life they had and the kind of like life they were living, their belief system, it, it wasn't standing up like suddenly the the cracks were starting to show in society right it was the fucking vietnam war people were, you know we came out of the idea of grandpa's war was you know the righteous war the world war ii it's what everyone kind of thought about right and you have your parades and mm -hmm. shit and suddenly that didn't fucking exist anymore sam's mm -hmm. like fuck you I'm yeah he's go. like i'm out like, no no he's like i'll he's just leave a recording sam by the way he's not. there he's getting water okay <laughs> i thought you were just like Done. You're like, yeah, bro. Uh, we know about Vietnam, whatever. It sucks. Smoke another J, whatever. Bro, <laughs> um, here. Shut up. <laughs> uh, but you know, I mean, it's a it's a fucking crazy time. Yeah, which and, is why a lot of radical change came from it, right? Be yeah, and a lot and a lot of mistakes also, right? I'm done uh, you know, that if you want. No, nah, I'm good. But you know, now it's in the people. Um, I don't like that. We're just, we're just desperate and, and fucking scared and looking for radical change. You know, people are fucking susceptible to all sorts of shit. You'll call the guy who picked you up hitchhiking. Exactly. <laughs> and have five kids with him. <laughs> right? That's what happens. That's what you meant. So, right? That was such a nice way of saying it. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. So... Yeah. Wow. Thank, thank That's that. cool. Well, should You're we ask so our three stupid. questions? Sure. Let's ask our three questions. Okay. That's great. Um, number one, take it away, sis. Yeah, number one. I mean, basically, if you if you're a musician, which you are, but you yeah, pretend you're yeah. not, but I know that about you, and you write really beautiful songs. Sure. Um, we would ask you, you know, how did you find music, and how did music find you? What what made music okay. the thing that got you got excited? It. Okay, so when I was, uh, I remember Riv trying to teach me guitar you know, when I was young, and it hurt my fingers, and I thought it was stupid, and it took way too much work, and I was like, ugh. <laughs> and I, you know, I think it was like two lessons, so like not a chance. And then <clears throat> Summer was a, a bit of a prodigy, um, a pianist, and... Uh, this I summer? She, this summer. I know that about And that. she played piano all the time and it was so beautiful and rich i remember just like watching but i because i'm an actor and i fake things and don't do it i just watched her movement of her body like from behind how she moved and i was like oh and so one day i just sat at the piano and i just kind of like rocked my myself and did that so i just got like the movement first um and then when i <clears throat> was in new york this guy, uh, this guy taught me a very basic trick about figuring out um, a chord. So if you identify each note, um, and let's say you're on a D, I think it's whole step, whole step. Oh, fuck you. It's how whole you step, became better than step, me in like step, two step. seconds. And, that right? was and then shame. that's a major chord. And then whole step, half step, whole step, or something like that. I can, I can only do it with my looking at it, is a minor. And so once you do that, you can figure out any major or minor chord. Um, and so then I just you know, did a very rudimentary kind of thing. But really the biggest thing is when I did a movie called Walk the Line and I had to learn guitar and I was just like so angry at myself for not learning from Riv. And at like 30 years old, I had to try and learn guitar. Um, really? It wasn't until then that you picked up guitar? Yeah, it was literally Rob Buono is which the first chord showed me a D and then a G. And then he said, oh, that's... Um, first chord, three and a half. Yeah. And he said, oh, that's uh, Everybody Hurts. That's basically, that's the whole thing is D to G. And then I think it's like E minor, I can't remember what, E minor, A minor maybe. But he showed me that chord and so, and then bought me that that electric guitar, uh, which I, you know, didn't use because I was playing acoustic, I had to learn. So that was, and that was, yeah, that was wow. before I bought the guitar when I met 
uh, the director James Mangold, the movie it went on bought a guitar and that was that. But I'd first, you know, just prior to that, I'd been working, not long, but figuring out piano. Yeah, right? you were like twenty three. <clears throat> no, you were eight and I was seven. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, um, yeah, because huh, it was like yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was so. That was so childhood. Yo, <laughs> it was. That's okay. So okay. Good. Question number. Yeah. So I do. Do. Duh. Duh. Question number. Question. Duh. Duh. Uh, what? Wait you, a minute. Why? Oh, uh, I, maybe she. You ask it. Uh, question number. Thank you, duh thank you for is, being judicious. Um, uh, what you, is? Um, is what is? What? Well, we kind of know. What yeah. activates your, art? Uh, your activism. Oh, I know I have enough. Um, yeah, you do. Uh, well, I mean, or right? Is that sort of the question? It's not really what it's. It's okay. You well, better ask it. It's true. It's true. No, no, we both no. end up asking it, and it, then the person gets it because we're like, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> but basically, just it, you know, with all that's going on in the world, that's what favorite. what what do you feel most passionate about that you can make a difference in your life with? I you don't. Know, it's like it's so, sometimes. What moves people, you to action? Is oh, it? That's nice. Sorry. Oh, okay. I like that. Um, I'm going to answer. Is it run rate? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but, but I, I like that. But the thing is, because I, I know at times pe people, you know, I've talked about animal rights, um, and I've had people, even though there are, there are other things that may be in, in, involved in, I think that's kind of the, the most, um, something that I have the biggest voice about in, in some ways. Um, and they say, how, how, why would you, why are you going to pay attention to kind of animal rights when there are so many people kind of suffering and, you know, why would you choose animals over people? And, um, I would say I'm, I'm not like, to me, they're connected. Um, it's just about empathy and seeing suffering and wanting to, to stop that. I'm not choosing one over the other and it just increases my capacity to care. Um, so, you know, there's not, I, I think that I just I think part of it is, you know, whatever, it fucking sounds stupid, but you, you see suffering in the world and you want to try and end that suffering. And, and, um, you know, it's sometimes just uh, undeniable. It's a, a feeling that you have that overcomes you. Now I still, I feel shitty talking about it and saying like your activism, because I feel like. I don't do enough and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm embarrassed. I wish I, I did more. Um, you know, I, I try and, and sometimes I guess you do what, what you can, but I always feel like, you know, I know people that are like activists, like they, that is their life, you know, like they dedicate their lives to it every day. And you go and you stand by them and shine a larger light on not only, you know, and the work that they're doing and their activism, but also how it blends and meets up with with yours i mean the pig vigils that i haven't had the courage which is the perfect word because it is it's like you know little balzac because i don't have the courage <laughs> <laughs> i said balzac the writer i was not okay 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 okay, okay. <laughs> go, go on your your row here by the way is not existing <laughs> it's not incredible it's let it go just like, I just it let never, it's like uh, yeah Ray, just keep out whatever you're doing yeah. today i'm on vacation my row here is totally <laughs> you, a stoner <laughs> my inner critic is just like you're good <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh boy. Uh, it's like vacationing in Mexico, yeah. speaking Spanish in a different country. Um, cool. No, but Let's you wrap were, this up. What else we got? Oh, well, okay. I mean, you were saying something. Sorry. Well, I know that I, that, you know, I think I said what oh, I was saying. So, number three. Still still, 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 still sing. Still still sing. Still still sing. Number third question one. number third. I have an answer. <laughs> number three. <laughs> <laughs> Can we quote you on that? Um, number three is um, who uh, are you listening to right now that you would like That's to? I just did the major intro, but go ahead. Uh, 
right so just do it bro like no. <laughs> question number three after well, number duh right uh so i had originally i came in with the intention of launching our all sister power group prairie um has that intention changed it has changed uh and who do you got who do you got better than that it's hard. It's hard to imagine, I I, right? I it's true. Yeah, I know. I, I, it's impossible. It kind of seems like. I know. I know. I think. No, honestly, when I thought about it, when when I was driving, we're gonna play that you guys don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. well, oh, that's well, what that bit. I was gonna change the bit. Well, I did. I suddenly changed the bit because I got nervous and I wanted you guys to feel uncomfortable too, and I put it on you. It's so fucked up. No, the the thing I wanted to uh, launch was Liberace. Um, I don't know if you're familiar. I think he's pretty really well known. He only launch things that, you okay. can't like launch Liberace or Bowie he, or. He needs it. Oh, Bowie? I think he's well, still I dead. Think. So. Oh. oh, that's not Liberace. 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 He really? No, he's not. Oh. Not yeah. That's, really? I don't still know. Still but thing? That's <laughs> still, still Bowie, alive? Bowie uh, is, and it's not. Bro, you're coming out here. Say something. Say something, bro. Um. No, and honestly, when I, you know, when I thought about the record that I've listened to that I've been most affected, it was by your record, Rain, right? no, really, most recently. Um, I, so I want to launch Rain Phoenix. I concur. And your record, River. Um, because I do, I think. <laughs> I know this, but it still feels different when it's in person, so fuck. Yeah, well, you said this it, on the way over. You called me and we're like, "Hey, I'm changing my launch." And I was like, "What? What do you mean? Why are you changing your launch yeah. now?" Uh, uh, well, the uh, record uh, is so fucking good. It is. It's so good. And I don't know if you. Um, I know he likes to stay in the background, but Kirk Kelly. Kirk Kelly is. I, I, mean, I can. What her. I'd like to celebrate him. Too. Yeah, I want to launch know. him. I mean, he's launched everybody yeah. in, that's a musician in LA and probably everywhere knows about him. Yeah. But the work that you guys did together is fucking astounding. And the live show, like that last live thing, it was so cool that everybody was there and mom, you know, just, it's so cute. But the record is it's beautiful. And it's, it's bold and courageous and heartfelt and truthful. And, uh, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I go, when I think about who's an artist that deserves to be launched and talked about in some way, not that anyone we've established is going to hear this or right. then, um, it's not all about the intention. Right. But I, I could only think of the, you in this record. So thank you so much. Yeah. I'm like freaking stoked. Hi, I'm Joaquin Phoenix and the artist I'm going to launch is my sister rain with her song. Emulate. You held my gaze. You turned my dark to
Launch Left aims to create an intentional space that highlights and empowers all artists for whom radical creativity is not a choice, but a necessity. Launch Left begins with music, but its ultimate aim is to launch left of center artists in all creative fields. Everybody, 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 everybody